Hello everyone and welcome to another new series on my channel. This one is a series that has been requested for a very long time and I get a lot of comments from people asking me how to trade in TF2. So I'm making this whole series, it's going to be about 16, 17 or so videos long um, and possibly more if I you know, think of different ideas for TF2 trading tips. Um, now this is going to range from stuff like item generators uh, and why they're bad, item qualities, how to start out and also cashing out once you feel like you're done with trading. Um, so sit back, enjoy the ride and I hope these videos teach you at least one thing you didn't already know and I hope I also help you out with trading and answer any questions that you might have about trading. The first thing I'm going to talk about is the basic how to get started in trading. Um, you know, the first episode, like the start of a new journey, I guess. You know what I mean. Um, so this is one of the questions I get asked the most about trading is how to start off. Now, there are actually a few ways to start trading and get into the economy. One of these is starting from scratch, which will be covered in this video. And another way is to actually use money to get yourself into TF2 trading and probably start yourself higher up if you buy an unusual as such which will be covered in a later video because this is just how to start out and I'm going to be covering some basic stuff. Now starting from scratch means you basically starting by finding a weapon or something and that being pretty much where you're starting from or if you're lucky in the short time you've you might have played TF2 uh, you could have found a hat to get a a small boost and potentially skip uh, the whole scrap banking step which will be explained a bit later in this video but let's just assume you've played tf2 for a couple of hours now got a few drops and have a couple of weapons in your backpack and you unfortunately haven't been lucky enough to find a hat um but you will get to that point later um and the biggest question is how do you start making these weapons and turning them into something else so that's what we're going to be talking about this episode. The first thing you are going to want to do is find a good trade server. One that has good ping for you. So Australian people, you can use Australian servers, which is probably logical. US people on US servers. And UK people, I guess you can use Europe if the ping's not too bad. Um, you also need one that has quite a few people on it. Not, It's really pointless finding a server that only has two people on it or really low amounts of people because the chance of somebody wanting what you are selling is significantly lower the less people on the server. So try to join a, a server as full as you can. So if you see on there there's like 23 out of 24, try and join something like that. Or maybe even 29 out of 30, that might be better because there's more people there to actually view your advertisements and potentially want your item. Now that you are in a trading server that has quite a lot of people on and good ping, you're going to want to work on your advertisement. Now this is quite important as it's basically how you're presenting yourself to others in the server and you want to become a, you want to come across quite professional and as if you know what you're doing. Um, just so more people will trade you as they think, okay, this is a person who knows what they're doing and somebody that is going to be easy to trade with and it's not going to be a really difficult thing where you need to talk for 10 minutes to try and buy one item for a really simple amount. It's a bit like a job interview, except you're not getting a job, you're advertising something you want to sell. So your current situation will probably be you're trying to sell these weapons that you found in your first couple days, couple hours of TF2. Um, so you don't want to shout something in all caps at people saying, I'm selling weapons, trade me now, as you can see on the screen, once I've edited it in. Um, or something else, because that just comes across childish and unprofessional, um, which is not what you want, because people will think that you are too difficult of a person to trade with if your advertisement's not that professional, because I don't, they don't want to go through the hassle of talking to this kid for half an hour, uh, trying to sell a weapon, or trying to buy a weapon for a scrap, and him being rude or childish and not really understanding. So make sure you are talking uh, and you will and you're presenting yourself how you want to be treated and seen by others in the server. So instead of shouting down the necks of everybody in your trade server, you're going to want to say something more professional 
like selling weapons for one scrap each. Trade me if you're interested. This way you come across more friendly and some somebody more people would actually want to trade because you fr you're friendly. Some people might not want the deal exactly, but because you're a nice person to talk to and a weapon's not that much to some people, you never know. You could just get a trade out of it. To make your advertisement seem a little bit more professional, you can use the names of the weapons you have found to target the people who want them more specifically. You don't have to do this as it takes up a lot of space in the actual trade window or the chat box and you don't have that much space in there. So you might want to keep it nice short and sweet shot. or if there's not a lot there you can type the names in. It's all personal preference really. Also if you see somebody in your trade server with a nice hat or an unusual that you want, don't trade them just because you see the hat and you want to try and get it and automatically assume that because they're in a trading server they're trying to sell it. Um, I get this a lot, a lot of people I talk to get this a lot and it just makes yourself come across really unprofessionally and is actually quite annoying if you're getting trades for things you're not advertising. So make sure you only trade people for stuff they are advertising or things you can actually see they're trying to sell. I get this a lot with my uh, Scorching Glengarry bonnet that I've traded for. It's not fun, so please don't do it. There's a lot of people complaining about it and you're only going to damage your reputation by doing it. Okay, congratulations, you have gotten a trade from somebody who wants your items. Make sure you greet them with a friendly hello, hey, hi, what's up, how's your day, something like that, just to make a good first impression. Do not be rude to them. It annoys people and makes them less likely to trade you. It's a lot like a job interview. You need to set yourself out and present yourself positively and make good first impressions and create positive relationships with these people you're trying to trade. Um, so if you're rude to people and you you yell at them and get angry if they don't actually want the item, uh, you're damaging your reputation, you're coming across really negatively and it's increasing the chance of you not actually ever getting a trade. So once you've got past the, tw the stages of saying hello and getting to form a positive relationship with the person you're trading, you can start to hear them out on what kind of trades you want to do. And hopefully a positive trade comes out of it and you get what you want, they get what they want. Manners in trading goes a long way and I can't stress this enough. Always be polite to people and it increases your chances of actually getting a trade. Um, if, you look, if you look at the example showing on the screen right now, you can see me and this guy are talking and asking each other about the kind of trade we want to do. Um, I advertised that I was selling weapons for scraps and you can see he's actually looking through the weapons and he's picking one. Um, so he's actually picked one now. Once he's picked it, you take the rest of the items out and wait for them to put in the items that you want. Um, make sure you don't overprice these items else it really damages the relationship between you and that person and makes them less likely to actually go through with the trade. Since you mostly all have weapons, if you're actually watching this part of the video, um, make sure you're trying to sell them for a scrap each. Or, if they don't have a scrap, that's completely fine. You can sell it for two weapons, which means you've profited a weapon, just like it would be if you've traded for a scrap. If somebody doesn't accept your deal, do not rage at them. Do not get angry and cuss at them if they don't accept. It's their choice if they take your offer or not. As in, it's their items, they can do what they want with them. Another rule you should follow, and you definitely should follow, is making sure you sell items for a fair price. If you overprice your items, especially weapons, people will not buy them. Only unusuals and high, well, unusuals to high tier unusuals sell for over their suggested price on backpack.tf. So at least try and stick near these price ranges if you want to get pretty quick trades. Also, if you want to check the price of some items, Backpack.tf is a good site to use. However, once you get to the unusuals, it's not the best place to look as unusuals are harder to price and they range more depending on who has them at the, that time. Also, you don't need to use trading servers to get these trades. TF2Outpost.com is a really good resource for getting these trades and actually really helps you when you have higher valued items. Also, I found that Outpost is better for selling weapons as more people can see it and search for a specific weapon and your trade will pop up. All you have to do to start on TF2 Outpost is sign in and then you can create trades based on your backpack. Make sure your backpack is public and your profile is public as well. 
else you're not allowed to trade on Outpost. And also, people trust you a lot less if your profile and your backpack are private, as it comes across as you're a shifty character and you're more of somebody who scams people. And that's not what you want to be seen as. But please don't just rely on Outpost or just rely on trading servers. Um, it's a lot better to kind of mix them together, trying to sell items on trading servers and on Outpost at the same time. Um, that just speeds up the whole process and will cause you a lot less frustration if an item doesn't sell because there's a lot more people actually potentially looking at your offers. Okay, so you've sold that weapon for a scrap. Um, you're now going to want to do something called scrap banking where you buy two more weapons with that one scrap which means you've just profited one weapon and doubled what you've started with. This method of trading unfortunately is really slow but it all adds up eventually once you build up to a couple of ref and you can move on to something a lot faster and less brain numbing. Um, scrap banking not, is not always really slow. It depends on who's on the server at the same time as you and what kind of servers you're actually playing on. Unusual servers won't get you these trades and normal trade servers have a better chance of actually getting you these trades. So make sure you keep swapping servers to advertise to different people as then there's more of a chance of getting that one person who wants to do a trade with you. So once you've actually bought these two more weapons with that one scrap, you're going to want to sell them on for a scrap each which leaves you with two scrap. Well, hey look, you've you've just profited another scrap. You've made even more profit and it's probably gone a little bit quicker. So make sure you keep doing this until you've got a couple of refined. If you don't know what a refined is, you can look on the screen right now and there will be a picture of it. So make sure you try and get at least one of those before moving on to the next step. Okay, so now that you've got at least one refined metal in your backpack, you can go on to buying craft hats and selling those on for profit. Back to trading servers slash outpost you go. Um, you know, wherever you prefer. This time your advert is going to look something more like this. Buying craft hats for 1 slash 1.11 ref. Now, this price here at the end, this 1 slash 1.11 ref, this is the price that you choose. 1.11 ref is generally easier to get trades, but you make less profit. 1 ref is going to take longer, but you get slightly more profit. You can obviously change this message to make it more personal to you, but this is like this is how I like to lay it out. It's all personal preference. Also, if you don't really understand what this 1.11 like decimal is, uh, one ref is one, obviously, and one scrap is 0 0.11. Uh, three scrap makes a reclaimed metal, which is 0 0.33, and you need three reclaimed metal to craft a one refined metal. So you go all the way up to 0 0.88, and then you go to one. So you skip 0 0.99 because you're pretty much there. Um, so it's it's just um, it just means how much metal you actually need to give. So 1.11 is one ref and one scrap. So just in case you didn't know that. Okay, so once you are in these trades for hats, you're gonna want to make sure they are craftable. What this means is that they that the hat can be used to craft other things. The way you can tell if a hat is craftable or not is only when it's not craftable. There will be a little sentence thing in the description of that hat when you hover over it saying this item is unusable and unusable in crafting, which means it's dirty, which is a word that traders use to describe hats that aren't craftable. And if there's not that let or there's not that little sentence there, it means it's clean slash craftable and that's the one you want to buy. Then you can sell it for zero or for one point three three slash whatever the backpack.tf prices or you can sell it to scrap.tf for whatever they offer for craft hats nowadays um, scrap.tf may pay more may pay less it all depends on what they've decided to start paying when you're trading um, then you just keep repeating this process and you should get to keys um, quite quickly it's gonna take a while it doesn't happen instantly but, but trading is a patience game um, so if you don't have patience, it's quite pointless trying to trade, else you'll just get angry, you'll get annoyed at people, which will make trades take even longer to get, and it's all just a massive chain of events that, you know, just leads to more anger. So make sure you are patient.
However, if you were lucky enough um, at the start of the video and you found a hat, um, you could just skip to the hat banking stage, sell off the hat for whatever it is on backpack.tf. Make sure you check that before you do this trade, else it could be quite an expensive hat and you could sell it for a lot less, which will mean you make less profit. Um, make sure you sell it within reason, obviously. If it's 1.33, you're probably not going to get much more than that for it. Um, but yeah, once you've sold that hat, then you can do the previous step and buy hats for 1 slash 1.11 refined, which means you've just skipped the whole tedious process of scrap banking. Lucky you. All right, so this is all I have time for for now. Thanks for watching this video. In the next one, I will talk about trading when you reach key levels, and I would have put that in the video, but I mean, this video is nearly 16, 17 minutes long, and I want these to kind of be shorter videos, but with more information in them um, to help you out on very specific areas of trading. And since there's a lot more to key trading, it kind of deserves its own video as well, as there is a lot more to cover. Also, stay tuned for the rest of the series as I hope it will start to bring a lot of information that is really useful for you to know when you start to trade in TF2. The economy right now in, in this game is not the best um, as everything just keeps changing a lot, but with some basic tips, you should be able to get a decent way in there. Also, if you are a more advanced in trading and you do have more items, still make sure you stay tuned to this series because later... In this series, um, when, once we've done a couple more episodes on basic stuff, I will be talking about more unusual things. So, obviously, how to price unusuals, what it means if they're duped, what duped and gifted means and why they affect the price, and stuff like that, and stuff you might still need to know and you might not know. So, yeah, let me, let me know what you think of this series so far. I'm trying to make this the best series possible for trading tips, um, which is why I'm sitting here at my dad's right now recording the words, because I want the video to be 1080p, which I can't record in my dad's house, unfortunately, so I'm sorry about that. Um, also, check out all the links in the description for my social media stuff. Um, if you have any questions about trading, either put them in the comments or follow me on Twitter and ask me the questions there. I'll try and answer as many as I can as I really want to help you new players into TF2 get into the economy and also try and make profit and get these awesome items you always think about, possibly. Um, so yeah, I hope to see you all soon. Check out my other videos if you enjoyed this one, and goodbye.